Good morning. Uh, I will lead this uh, section. My name is Tomasz Utre, uh, and I will give some instruction about presentation. Uh, each author has 50 minutes, and the uh, discussion will be at the end of all uh, presentation. I will warn uh, the authors uh, one minute before ending to, to finish in time. Thank you. First presenter will be uh, Luigi Mario, and with, uh, he will present uh, forum well joint hot deep galvanization effect on the fatigue life and local energy analysis. Please. Please, uh, Sorry. Um, so the work I pre I'm presenting is the uh, result of a series of fatigue testing on uh, welded joints in structural steel, a part of which has been galvanized to understand which to understand whether this technique for protection poses a threat. <laughs> Uh, when building uh, a, st a structure like a civil structure. Uh, so the work has been done in collaboration with uh, ESPO University in, uh, Alto University in ESPO uh, near Helsinki, Finland. Uh, so I'll go through the motivation for this research, uh, quickly recall uh, the main techniques for the assessment of welded joint, and then present the fatigue testing and its result and conclusions. Um, so what, what we have today is that uh, galvanization is not included in the Euro code. Uh, so for example, in the section nine regarding fatigue, um, there is uh, no, no information whether this technique might be uh, applied. And uh, well, this could be useful because for example, um, a layer of 200 microns of zinc could protect the structure for some 80 to 100 years. Uh, which is in quite good accordance with the predicted fatigue life for a civil structure, while uh, the techniques we are adopting today require more frequent maintenance with costs and sometimes risk of failure. Uh, another advantage of zinc and, um, is that it, will, uh, it has lower potential than steel, so it will keep to uh, protect with cathodic protection, even in case it's perhaps scratched, so it's not uh, evenly distributed on all the surface. Um, so what uh, we have during the process is basically some surface treatments basically for cleaning it, for having a good reaction with the molten bath, uh, with the bath of molten zinc, which is at around 450 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have atomic diffusion with the form of different phases uh, between uh, iron and, uh, and zinc, and the main, the main problem is that they have mismatch in the external expansion coefficient and micro cracks will form uh, within the zinc layer at the boundary with the base material. And this, uh, this micro crusher will uh, initiate, might initiate then fatigue cr cracks during, and that will lead to final failure uh, during the testing or the service life. Um, so some work has been done uh, in the past uh, from uh, other researchers already, and uh, in this case I will present a couple of cases. Um, like here, for example, we have a detail that Eurocode suggests to be a category 125, that is 125 megapascal of delta nominal stress at uh, two million cycles of fatigue life. and Comparing the results between the galvanized and non-galvanized specimens, there is a decrement of 17% in the fatigue strength for the galvanized. Uh, and this present also a slight uh, reduction compared to the uh, reference category for this detail, which is generally, these categories are generally very conservative. Um, the same happens uh, in the case of another uh, detail, a T-joint uh, non-load carrying, 
uh, that is the weld only the fillet does not carry the load purely but introduce it, introduces a notch effect mm -hmm. and um, in this case both galvanized and as welded uh, respect the uh, their relative fatigue class but the galvanized has uh, a lower a lower fatigue strength of 15 percent um, so this nominal stress uh, it's basically the uh, probably the easiest way to do the fatigue assessment for uh, well the detail and uh, a lot of experimental work has been done because you have to characterize its each uh, kind of joint with a relative resistance and uh, in 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 the sign or verification, you will use the nominal, stre the nominal stress, that is the remote stress uh, distant from the intensification caused by uh, external attachments or the fillet, uh, and that will be compared to uh, a reference fatigue curve that is found in the literature. Um, similar to what happens with the structural hotspot uh, stress approach, but this uh, adds uh, a major detail that is that um, it will consider not the effect of the notch itself, uh, not the effect of the fillet, but the effect of the other attachment to our uh, joints. So we'll make uh, a coarse mesh with nodes in precise points, extract the stress, and uh, extrapolate the stress to the hotspot, that is to the failure point according to uh, <coughs> Uh, precise formulas. Um, wanting more detail about uh, what happens around the notch tip, we can record to pressure mechanic and to the notch stress intensification factors. Uh, um, the, the issue that we have with these uh, values are mainly two, and that is that we need to compute them through the stresses. Uh, that is we need a very, very refined mesh uh, for having a good approximation of the stresses and then compute the K1 and the K2. And also, they depend on the values they're, they're measured, and so their critical values depend on the uh, Williams eigenvalues, which are a function of the notch opening angle. Uh, so it's basically, uh, it becomes more difficult to characterize the material because its uh, critical value changes in order to the entity of the opening of the notch. Uh, so for this, we can use the strain energy density average in a critical value uh, in a critical volume around the notch tip, and this value is always constant. Uh, its critical value is constant. And its measurement unit are constant, obviously, and energy divided by uh, a volume. And a big advantage is that it's possible to obtain this value with uh, a very coarse mesh. That is, giving a look at uh, uh, some basic equations from the finite element model, it's possible to obtain the energy in one element as a function of the displacements and matrix. So for coarse mesh, we'll have uh, lower displacements and higher stiffness. Um, these two effects are balanced. So from here we obtain uh, a mesh refinement in sensitivity of this method and for example in this case we can observe that there are two very different discretization around the weld, uh, the weld root uh, that is the, the crack created by the lack of penetration in a load carrying joint and on one side we have 16 elements in the, on the other side we have several thousand elements mm -hmm. computing the uh, strain energy density on this critical volume uh, the difference is merely 5%. So it's, um, th this is useful when uh, doing the pre-processing, but also the processing in case of a bigger structure. Um, the radius of this critical, uh, this critical volume is a material property, so it will uh, be calibrated for a class of material. Uh, I mean, like, uh, what I mean is, for example, uh, structural, welded structural steels or welded aluminum, and uh, it will be uh, constant for that class of material. Uh, quite a lot of work has been done on this in the past, uh, so for this, uh, for this kind of uh, method there is already, for example, for uh, welded steel, 
there is already uh, a comprehensive fatigue band that is a useful tool in case of verification and design. And uh, another advantage is that it does not uh, require to decrease the strength of the material when we are dealing with uh, thicker plates, thicker components. Uh, for example, in the case of the nominal stress approach, uh, we have to decrease the, the fatigue class Accord when we um, exceed a reference thickness of 25 millimeters. Uh, instead, in the case of the strain energy density, this will be already taken into account by the solving of the mesh, so we will we'll already obtain uh, a higher energy from the model. Or, recurring to the similitude theory for the stress field, uh, we can obtain a uh, a useful formulation in case we have solved a model for a certain thickness and then we have a geometrically similar joint of different characteristic lengths and in that case we can use the result in terms of energy from the previous model and just adjust it proportionally to the different in thickness or characteristic length and the uh, William Sagan value of the uh, opening angle of the notch. So the joints that we have tested, uh, they were geometry one, um, uh, load carrying joint of 10 millimeters thickness plate, and geometry two, no load carrying joint, uh, thicker, 30 millimeters, and uh, they have been uh, produced with the structural S235 uh, structural steel, and welded with uh, mark process, then they have been uh, galvanized up to a thickness of around half a millimeter and the, um, the clamping area has been machined in order to reduce the bending effect because of course after the welding the joints won't be perfectly aligned. Uh, so they have been tested at 10 Hertz uh, with a load ratio of 0.01 and the Coming to the failures, the most interesting failures are probably the ones from the geometry one. The geometry one is a load carrying geometry. There is uh, with uh, a lack of penetration. That is the, the the weak point will be basically the crack that that is created by the lack of penetration. Uh, so the weld root. Uh, we would expect all these joints to fail from the weld root, but some of them failed from the weld toe. And the idea is that you, we don't see overall from all the specimens uh, a decrease in fatigue life, but that, that is because obviously the galvanized, the, the zinc, does not penetrate to the internal of the material to the weld root. But where it, uh, where it does some action there is on the weld toe, uh, it decreases the strength in, in a way to make these two failure modes actually concurrent. So we have seen also in this case some failures at uh, the weld toe. Uh, the results in term, terms of nominal stre uh, stress range are uh, um, aligned uh, according to two quite narrow bands and there is uh, I believe mostly due to the fact that the specimens have been machined prior to testing to uh, reduce the effect of the bending. But it's maybe more interesting to compare the results with the, um, with the relative fatigue classes suggested by the International Institute of Welding by the Obacker document. And in the case of geometry one, uh, as I said, there is on one side a change in the, uh, sometimes a change in the way the samples fail, but not uh, actually not a decrement in the uh, properties of the material compared to the uh, nominal stress fatigue class. Whilst observing the geometry two results, um, these samples are quite thick, and the thickness reduction suggested by the document, I believe, wasn't. Uh, um, really severe enough and uh, also we have some some decrement due to the galvanization. We can observe this also looking at uh, results from previous work 
So in this case, we have uh, still no load carrying, both as well the galvanized joints. Uh, these are the as welded. They are the crosses and the uh, the X's, and the crosses are the galvanized joints, and they are exactly the same in the same thickness, 10 millimeters. And we can see that the galvanized joints present a reduction in, uh, in fatigue life, as uh, found also, as seen also in the first part of the presentation for uh, other kind of joints. So in the case of the strain energy density, uh, they are uh, perfectly aligned with the results that we already uh, find and there is also for the thicker geometry, this is uh, taken into account by the solution of the numerical model itself. So I will conclude um, saying that the, this thickness effect is, uh, it can be accounted with the similitude theory and uh, can be useful for uh, solving, for example, a single model for every kind of joint when we have multiple dimensions of the similar joint. And then, while for uh, the geometry one, there was the uh, load carrying, we haven't seen any reduction in fatigue life. We have seen it for the other joints where the uh, zinc directly acts on the uh, critical point on the well toe. So it would be important to consider the effect of galvanization when uh, uh, proceeding to design or verification of structure. Uh, and I, I, I would, for, from the results I've seen, um, I would suggest maybe to uh, use a fatigue, fatigue band for a joint in poor, conduct, poor conditions or a lower class or perhaps uh, augment the uh, value of the safety coefficient, uh, perhaps adopting 1.2 safety safety condition uh, safety coefficient due to the adoption of uh, organization. Thank you. Thank you for nice presentation.